Doctors have told us for decades to avoid eating fish that has high levels of mercury. Now a new study of fish from Hawaii says they're being contaminated by air pollution from Asia. Researchers believe coal burning power plants in countries like China and India are to blame. CBS News contributor Dr. David Agus is a professor of medicine at the University of Southern California. Doctor, good morning. Good morning, Anthony and Gail. Hey. Um, to start with, how, how is contamination from, from Asia, from particularly India and China, getting into fish that we're eating? How does that process work, we think? Well, they're coal-burning plants there predominantly, and the coal has mercury in it. And so when the coal burns, the mercury goes into the atmosphere, and that's a form of elemental mercury that doesn't hurt you and I. But then it goes by rain into the ocean, and the bacteria there convert it to methylmercury. The fish can eat it, and then we eat the fish. Uh, Dr. Agus, I keep hearing that mercury is bad. I don't know why it's bad. How bad is it? What exactly does it do to our bodies? Well, it ain't good. Mm -hmm. In the 1950s, there was a town in Japan that they started to notice the cats would start to scream spontaneously and birds would fall from the sky. Mm -hmm. And then the people there started to develop tremors and problems with their memory. And it really was the first case of mercury contamination. It was from a chemical plant there. Mercury, when we eat fish, can cause problems with our nervous system, our heart system, and our immune system. It's really bad for pregnant mothers, young kids who have a developing brain. We don't really know what dose of mercury causes what, because we can't do the experiment. Right? We can't give somebody mercury and see what happens. But what we know is you want to avoid it as much as possible. The study also says there's, there's actually more mercury in deep sea fish, like, like swordfish, than, than other fish like tuna. First of all, how is that happening, and, and how do we know what we can actually eat now? Well, this was an important study, because what it showed was that the mercury at the top level, much of it is degraded by sunlight. And as you get deeper, that sunlight can't degrade the mercury, and the fish eat the bacteria, then other fish, and they get more and more mercury. And so when you go to the store, the problem is you don't really know how much mercury is in, in what fish. The EPA does list guidelines. And what's really astonishing about those guidelines is that you can have 50 servings of salmon or 100 servings of trout for one serving of swordfish and get the same mercury. So we all need to be aware of the guidelines. More and more stores are testing themselves and putting the information up there, which I think is a great idea. Is there such a thing, doctor, as eating mercury in moderation? Can you do that? A lot of people hate giving up swordfish. Well, listen, you know, uh, it's like telling a Los Angeles, uh, someone from Los Angeles, you can't have any smog. Yeah. Much time you have no choice. Every fish the EPA has shown has some mercury. You want to limit the high mercury fish to as little as you can and then have more of the low mercury fish. And so we just need to be aware of what we're doing. But this study also showed us that as we build more and more cities, especially in China and India, mercury level is going to continue to go up. So we need to push for international controls of mercury in these plants and ways that we can actually degrade the mercury so it doesn't cause a problem to all of us. All right. Dr. David Agus, thanks so much.